good morning everyone uh, in last lecture we have studied or we have completed with the functional disorders of the thyroid gland and today we are going to study the second part of this particular chapter that is the goiter okay so this we have studied till now that is hyperthyroidism hypothyroidism there we have studied the two uh, parts that is the first one is keratinism which is hypothyroidism in the adolescents and the children and the myxedema it is also hypothyroidism in the adulthood and today we are going to study about goiter and its types so this is all we have completed so i will just move to the slide so goiter so what is uh, goiter it is defined as thyroid enlargement which is caused by compensatory hyperplasia and hypertrophy of follicular epithelium in response to the thyroid hormone deficiency okay so the end result of this hyperplasia hyperplasia is you have studied it is increase in number of cells okay and this happens due to the thyroid hormone deficiency okay so the end result of this hyperplasia is u thyroid state u thyroid state means it is the state of the thyroid gland where the production and secretion of the thyroid hormone is at normal level okay so it is exactly in contrast to the thyrotoxicosis which occurs in diffuse toxic goiter or the graves disease where there is excess of secretion of the thyroid hormones okay but though at some stages there may be hypo or hyperthyroidism okay so two morphologic forms of goiter are dist distinguished the first one is the diffuse goiter which is also known as simple non toxic goiter or the colloid goiter and the second type of goiter which we have is the nodular goiter which is also called as the multinodular goiter or the adenomatous goiter okay so first we are going to study about a diffuse goiter which is also called as simple non toxic goiter or the colloid goiter okay so diffuse non toxic simple or colloid goiter is the name given to diffuse enlargement of the thyroid gland which is unaccompanied by hyperthyroidism okay so most of the cases they are in state of u thyroid though they may have passed through the preceding stages of the hypothyroidism due to inadequate supply of iodine okay understand this one clearly that there is no hyperthyroidism there can be hypothyroidism followed by the u thyroidism but no hyperthyroidism is present okay so the tsh levels they are invariably elevated in general the goiter is more common in females when we compare it with that of the males the simple goiter it often appears at puberty or in adolescence following which it may either regress that means the growth will uh, it will shrink or it may produce uh, or it may progress to the nodular goiter okay so nodular goiter is like the next step of the diffuse goiter so etiology uh, epidemiological uh, epidemiologically the goiter it occurs in two forms that is the first one is the endemic and second one is non endemic or sporadic okay so endemic is like that uh, many of the people from one certain region they are suffering from that particular disease then we can call it as the endemic disorder okay so it is like uh, but in case of covid it is pandemic as the entire globe is uh, suffering from it okay so if it was to be uh, or it was only contained in the china then we would have called it as endemic disease okay so endemic goiter the prevalence of goiter in a geographic area 
in more than 10% of the population is termed as endemic goiter. Okay, so more than 10% of the population should be affected with the goiter, then it is a it is an endemic goiter. So such endemic areas, they are several high mountainous regions which are far from the sea where iodine content of the drinking water and the food is low, such as in the regions of the Himalayas, the Alps and the end. Okay, so uh, of late, however, the prevalence in this area, it has declined due to prophylactic use of iodized stone. Okay, so... Uh, let me be clear with you that iodized salt it is essential to be eaten in the areas where there is lack of iodine in the waters ground waters but as we live near to the sea level there is uh, enough amount of iodine in the ground water so we actually don't require uh, extra consumption of the iodine but still if we consume it then there is no harm to it. Okay. So, though most of the endo endemic goiters they are caused by dietary lack of iodine, some cases they occur due to goitrogens and the genetic factor. Goitrogens are the agents which have capability to cause the goiter. Okay. So, they what they do, they interfere with the synthesis of the thyroid hormones. These substances can be the drug which can which are used in treatment of hyperthyroidism and certain items of the food such as cabbage cauliflower turnips and cassava roots okay then sporadic or non endemic goiter non endemic or sporadic simple goiter is less common than that of the endemic variety in most cases the etiology of sporadic goiter is unknown a number of causal influences they have been attributed. So if we don't know exactly why the sporadic goiter is happening, then we try to find out the causes for it. And there are certain causes uh, which have been uh, identified, but uh, we cannot exactly tell that if this cause is present, then it will lead to the sporadic goiter. That's why... Uh, they are just the uh, like guesses or assumptions. Okay. So suboptimal iodine intake in conditions of increased demand as in puberty and pregnancy. Second is genetic factors. Third is dietary goitrogens. Then there is hereditary defect in thyroid hormone synthesis and transport, which is nothing but called as dishormonogenesis. And there are, they can be inborn errors of the iodine metabolism. So it is not like that you know, all of these reasons can be present at the same time in every cases of the sporadic goiter. Any of these case, any of these reasons can be present uh, and can lead to the sporadic goiter. Okay. So next type of uh, goiter or it is like the next stage of the simple goiter that is nodular goiter, which is also called as multinodular goiter or adenomatous goiter. Okay. So what is nodular goiter is regarded as end stage of long standing, uh, standing uh, simple goiter. Okay. So it is characterized by most extreme degree of tumor like enlargement of thyroid gland and it is characteristic of nodularity so it will show presence of nodules in it okay so enlargement of gland may be sufficient to not only cause the cosmetic disfigurement but in many cases it may cause dysphagia and choking due to compression of esophagus and trachea so this abnormal increase in size of the thyroid gland it will put pressure onto the esophagus and trachea and thus causing the dysphagia and the choke okay so the most cases they are in euthyroid state but about 10 percent cases may develop thyrotoxicosis okay so as we have studied earlier the simple goiter 
there is no presence of the hyperthyroidism state there will always be the euthyroidism or the hypothyroidism but never hyperthyroidism but in case of nodular gut there is hyperthyroid state can be present and it results into toxic nodular goiter or the plumous disease okay so etiology the etiologic factors which are implicated in endemic and non endemic or sporadic variety of simple goiter they are involved in the etiology of the nodular goiter too okay because it is like uh, extension of the simple goiter only okay if not treated the simple goiter it may result into this multinodular variety but however the nodular pattern is produced is not clearly understood possibly uh, they have given uh, the a certain reason to it that epithelial hyperplasia generation of new follicles and irregular accumulation of colloid in the follicles they all contribute to produce increased tension and stress in the thyroid gland and thus causing the rupture of follicles and vessels and this is followed by hemorrhages cystic change scarring and sometimes calcification and it results in development of nodular pattern okay. so this is the uh, pathogenesis of the simple and nodular goiter so uh, there are two reasons that can cause the hypothyroidism that is the lack of iodine and second one is the goitrogens okay so this lack of thyroid hormone production leads to the excessive tsh stimulation so it leads to the cyclic hyperplasia involution which results into the diffuse goiter so as i said it is like first step of the goiter then if there is repeated hyperplasia involution takes place then it can result into two things that is first is the fibrosis of the involuted areas and second is that growth of hyperplastic areas may take place and both of this they will culminate into or they will result into the nodular goiter okay so uh, with this we have finished with the chapter that is the thyroid diseases and uh, that's all from my the, my side and i will conclude my lecture over here only thank you